Please welcome Carlo Ratti, the director of the MIT Sensible Cities Lab and founding partner of the Carlo Ratti Associati. Great. Um, so, good afternoon, everybody. I just want to share with you a few slides, uh, you know, as we are looking into the next uh, panel, the closing panel about, you know, future and science. Uh, can we have the first video? And uh, the first thing I want to, to share with you is, uh, you know, from a, we look at a lot of uh, projects that uh, look at mobility tomorrow and many other dimensions of the city. We look at cities in general. But as Popper said, uh, you know, we really cannot predict the future. You know, from a philosophical point of view, it's very difficult. And if you look at this, this is how France looked at uh, year 2000, 100 years ago. You know, they look at some things right. You know, if you look at this, you see mechanization. They invented Roomba uh, before the Roomba. <laughs> Uh, some things they got right, this didn't happen. This was actually flying police uh, that uh, we have yet to see, or you know, going underwater, we, saw, we talked before about water, um, uh, or you know, flying uh, uh, firemen that uh, would have been very useful actually in the, in the big fire in Notre Dame uh, just a couple, of, a couple of weeks ago. But the key point is really, uh, you know, sometimes we get it right, sometimes we get it wrong, but it's really impossible to think about the future more in a predictive way. And the reason is that the future is not yet written. So the very important thing, and that's uh, what we try to do every day here at MIT at Sensible City Lab, is more to start from the present and try to multiply how you know, we could transform it. Uh, we call the future craft. It's about you know, looking at the potential in the way we can change today's condition and, uh, and how we can actually share this with people so that we, together we can decide what type of future we, we build. And I want to give you just in a couple of minutes a very simple example. It's an example that's based on analyzing data. Uh, it's about mobility. So we started looking at mobility in New York. Uh, we actually used a lot of data about mobility that was opened up by Mike Bloomberg when he was mayor. I remember when he was mayor, Mike Bloomberg in his office has a little si had a little sign uh, that went, uh, in God we trust, everybody else bring data. And so what he did as mayor was actually open up a lot of data sets for people to use and for researchers to analyze. And so I want to share with you something we, uh, we just did a few months ago that was in, um, on the cover of uh, uh, Nature uh, Journal. And uh, that was about looking at all the mobility data he opened up in New York, analyzing it, and see, for instance, the inefficiency of the taxi system today, how it could be made better, and how dispatching could change tomorrow if you look at more sophisticated algorithms for, uh, for running and understanding mobility. So a simple example just ahead of the, the discussion in a moment about the future and science, um, about uh, how really the important thing is to look at data to understand the present, and then together see how we can, uh, we can change it. So if you can have the other video, uh, what you see here is actually real data, the data that um, uh, is from New York. It was opened up, as I said, by Mike Bloomberg. It's real data about taxes in New York. And then we started looking at this, analyzing it um, with Nectar Science and uh, asking the question, you know, what would be the minimum number of vehicles we might need in the city? And uh, this is actually for the same mobility, for satisfying the same mobility, this is how many cars we need today. But as I said, there's a lot of inefficiency. So um, if we are just smarter in the way we do dispatching, we could actually run the city with much less cars. And here you see how the algorithm works. You find all the connections between the different trips. Again, you know, it's a network science-based algorithm. And uh, to the right, you see actually the situation today, how many cars you got today. And to the left, actually the minimum number of cars you will need to satisfy exactly the same mobility demand. So you would take everybody to destination at the same time, but in a much more efficient way. And if you think about tomorrow, then uh, you know, we sell driving cars. Potentially, we could run the city with 50% of the cars we, we have today. So a simple example, just you know, starting from you know, those initial sketches from the early 20th century in France about how mobility might be in the year 2000. Yes, we could try to predict the future. And most of the time, so it's, a, it's a random process, as Popper said. Um, and actually, the other approach, which is let's start from the present, from the amazing amount of data we got today about cities, about the environment, and use that in order to see how it could be transformed. And I will leave it to, to the next panel. Thank you.